Hey everyone. Well, it's not often that we sit here and say history was made, but it was just made in the stock markets. The biggest single day wipeout in history thanks to Facebook in terms of market cap size, a negative technical signal appearing on the charts, and then Amazon's bumper earnings along with Snap and Pins. We'll be covering the stock, crypto, and commodities markets in full detail right now. Stay tuned. There's a lot going on and volatility isn't about to stop. See you soon. Welcome back to our market daily recap here for the market's close third of February 2022. And when we're looking at it on the surface, you would think what a big red day. We predicted this as a community. We were correct. Check out our previous videos. Make sure to subscribe and of course, like the videos if you've been enjoying the content so far. But Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they were all getting belted and we saw semiconductors in particular getting hit as well with some of those down some considerable percentages. But this is the story of the session. Amazon going into earnings, people were negative on it. We asked the community what you thought. I would say it tinted towards the negativity side. The only thing we got correct here was definitely that they were gonna raise the price of Prime, but they beat expectations. And this is why sometimes in earnings season, expect the unexpected. Everyone was going negative. The stock was down heavily, heavily, heavily. And then all of a sudden it comes out with a bumper earnings blow away. So this is thanks to Rivian and really Amazon topped the expectations, but with its after hours moves upwards of 17 to 20%, we do expect to fade and we'll discuss that a little bit later. Could it be a little bit more of a trap in the broader sell off of the markets? Well, let's look at the facts, the figures and the stats breaking this down together right now. First up, we'll go through these indices and everything was getting brutalized. We suspected this would occur once we had such a huge rally and the Dow, the S&P 500, and of course the NASDAQ were down heavily on the session and the NASDAQ was leading at negative 4.22% at one point. The key was the close. The close was showing us weakness into the end of the day. That means that Wall Street was selling into that point and even they were surprised by some of these blowout earnings from things like pins, Snap, and Amazon. You also know they were selling because defensives were the best performing sectors. This is what Wall Street tends to do. They tend to go into these defensive sectors because they have to have money invested in the market. They just wanna lose a little bit less than everybody else when they're getting ready for a sell-off. And this was what was occurring. We do know that there's been a lot of puts in the market. We've shown this chart before, but I think this illustrates how much retail traders, how much the little guys out there get attacked by Wall Street because for some reason, so many people have been negative on the market recently that there is a 38% higher number of puts in the market, and this is from small traders. Usually small traders have short dated options. Ask yourself, have you ever traded options? You generally trade them for less than a month, usually a week or a couple of days. And that's something that we will illustrate right now has been occurring. So let's take a look at this week in the SPY. We'll start here with the stocks, then we'll go into, of course, some commodities, general discussion, and end up with indices and crypto. But let's look at the SPY here. So this is the Monday coming into the session. And we notice that the options are kind of heavily striked around this 4th of expiry, 4th of Feb expiry. We have that 420 and around that 460. So we kind of know where the resistance might have been. And as we go through the sessions and the closes, you'll notice a few puts got opened here. Everyone started going bearish. The market then resumed its uptrend for the session. It resumed it again. And then all of a sudden in the last session, this is the one coming into the Amazon sell off, the Amazon then buy up after the close. We have a huge amount of puts being put in for the expiration. Yes, 450 strike on the SPY just got absolutely hit with a huge amount of bearish bets coming into the jobs numbers and possibly into also the Amazon result. And this is why we're now stuck in a very tough zone coming through the Friday. We might even have a bit of consolidation before some volatility because 450 and 460 are now looking like two points where the market kind of doesn't want to close below but it doesn't want to close above. Bearish bets were placed heavily through the Thursday session. And this is one of those things where retail traders tend to trade for just a few days. To prove that, let's have a look at the next week worth of expirations. Whoa, look at this. Nowhere near the amount of puts. And when there are puts in the market, they're well, well lower. 
So the market is actually showing us that a lot of people have taken bearish bets. It's reversed for now. And it's showing us that if it's allowed to go lower next week, that it could go significantly further down without triggering any particular put or call walls. So the options market really shows us the way here in terms of some of the things we can bring together with the technical analysis. But let's get started into some of the big stats as well. For anyone that's just joining us on the channel, of course, welcome. But this is some of the stuff we like to bring up. If we have huge rallies coming into the end of the month, stats don't really lie. If we go through 50, 60 years worth of data, you'll notice that when that happens, we tend to have an incredibly volatile next month with much of the time it actually being negative to sideways. And this is only positive 30% of the time. And then if we bring a stat plus that with bad January data, this is where it gets really crazy. If you're down 5% in January, you tend to have a very weak February, which again, the other stat was pointing towards and the volatility currently. And the end of the year, well, that's indecisive but or inconclusive. But overall, the February tends to be a lot weaker. So this all leads into, of course, our standard seasonality with growth stocks that Jan, Feb, March into huge bull rally. And for many people out there that are freaking out about the markets, don't freak out, be prepared for any scenario. And that's what we try to do here. Let's look at some of the basic fundamentals of the markets right now. You can follow us over at FX Evolution if you want to find more information about some of our thoughts throughout the trading sessions and throughout the day. But the beat data came out here for Q4 earnings so far, and it's still really good. 76% beat rate, down two percentage points from the previous one. And what we are seeing is a bit of a disparity between the beats. We've got really large companies beating, and really small companies missing. So we're at 443 beats, 140 misses, but the real story in the markets right now is not so much the beats or misses, it's the guidance towards Q1. What are the actual stocks telling us about their growth moving forward? And a lot of them have been saying, we expect a slowdown, things are not as good as they seem from that perspective. And one of the indices is showing us that weakness and that's the Russell 2000, the smaller cap companies. Let's move over here to the VIX and get stuck into the technical analysis. So volatility dropped a little bit in previous sessions down to the 20. This is exactly where we expected it to spike back up and it did. And then it's gone all the way back to 26 and dropped off. To put this in perspective, since that's a five minute chart, We'll have a look at it on the daily. You can see volatility has spiked up and we expect it to continue to be like this for the rest of February. It's unlikely to really drop too much into what is going to be the interest rate decision changes and more economic data, which will really position, I guess, the market on whether they have to go hard on interest rates and harder than everyone expects or possibly soften up their approach depending on the numbers. Let's move over to the two year. Two year continues to spike up here. For some people, they'll be looking at this as a flag and saying, okay, here we go. Interest rates are going to go further up here over the two year period. We saw a previous flag over here. And of course the expectation would be that we might even be going past 1.3% on the two year. This could knock around things like the US 100, the NASDAQ in particular, the growth stock. So even though Amazon has bounced up and it all looks great, this is not telling us. This is one of our key signals for really the turnaround story to be in. At the moment, it's in a trajectory up. It's not showing us weakness here. And this goes for the 10 year as well. The 10 year continues to climb, continues to show us that the market hasn't fully taken into the account, the shock rate of these interest rate changes. Gold market still quite slow here. We bring up gold just because everyone is interested in it to a degree. We had that inverse head and shoulders we reported on. We thought this was an interesting buy zone. I guess so far it's been okay, but we are coming into non-farm payrolls and gold will be incredibly volatile through that event. So be careful here. It should be up a lot more considering what the dollar index is doing. The dollar index is really falling off a cliff here possibly unfairly being sold. And that is interesting because the dollar index is down so much, yet gold should be ramping all the way back up to 1850. It just hasn't done so. Not a great sign for it there. Where the commodities are doing better is of course oil. People that have been invested in energy over the last year, you are beasts, you've been smashing it. We've been following oil here on the channel for quite some time. Though I must admit this 85 to 92 run, while we expected it to happen, 
has been incredibly weird on the technical analysis standpoint. We had rejections, rejections, bullishness. Okay, cool, we can go bullish. And then we just continuously grind higher with weird long leg doji candles that are showing us, yes, it's still high. Yes, the market is still showing bullishness, but it's just very different to how it has been. The volatility is increasing. Could this be the signs of the beginning of the end here for oil a little bit? Either or, 92 becomes the next resistance. And the reason why is when we go to the weekly, you'll notice back in history, when you go all the way past, you'll get that great resistance the first time, great supports three times over, and it makes sense to be the next level or zone for oil to hit. Let's now take a look at the one that everyone's discussing, Amazon. And it was a phenomenal movement. And I mean phenomenal, one for the ages. You don't often see giant tech stocks moving 20% plus. And we had two of them going in opposite directions. Facebook down, Amazon up. <laughs> wow. I mean, I've been trading the markets for a long time. And for some of you out there, you probably won't realize that is such a big deal. It's huge. Like, it's rare to see this. I mean, other than things like the pandemic crash and times like the G GFC, you just don't see this type of movement that often, especially through multiple big fang stocks. So this was pretty amazing. We got that big return. And look, we've got concerns over this rally because it could hold up. And look, Amazon, if you're looking at it from an investment perspective, are you going to hate on Amazon? <laughs> no. I mean, you'd be dumb to think about it in three, four years time not being higher than it is right now. However, we have the supports and that is becoming resistance. And when we take the pull of the entire move up, this rally might have been a little bit too quick, a little bit too fast, even for the earnings results. Support becomes resistance. 50% FIB to the 38.2. This is exactly where we expect problems to happen. And then just above that, you've also got the downward trend or the trend line that could act as resistance. So I think Amazon traders, if you've done it, well done. We're now settling in the post market around 31.75. I mentioned this immediately when I saw that result that when it goes in here, this is where we expect for it to open, if not a little bit lower. And it's like a fade after that earnings result. It was higher though. It went upwards of much past 3200 so it just really shows that you've got to have conviction in your trades and if you take things off and they keep going move on to the next one always for trade top tip for everybody out there have an entry have a take profit have a stop loss if you don't have that then you're really investing you're not really trading because traders will always have stop losses and take profit ideas because you're trying to build a business around it if you're an investor then you have a fundamental process that you go through. And of course, if you're just buying the dip and buying levels and you're looking for resistance, you're more just doing kind of like a swing base, not so much trade, but maybe a multi-month investment process. Let's move over to Tesla. So this was looking negative into the close as well. It held up really well, and that is to be commended. But if you look at this on principle, we basically have like a hanging man style candle, though not with the gap. Then we have a bearish candle and a rejection again from a rally. Now, post market, it's sitting at 905, but that's not the type of chart that we look at and we go, mm, we love we love this one. <laughs> this looks great. I don't think it looks great. We do like Tesla. We think it's one of the best trade stocks out there as well. But really, it's that 950 that we're trying to break through to get that next rip rally where everyone FOMOs into the thousand and then hopefully goes past that level. This is still a little bit of a problem. And I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that it's been holding better than some. It's got a lot of bullish pressure behind it due to just the social discussion about Tesla. People can't understand how it can be down with an earnings result. Well, the market could do wild and wonderful things. Just remember that. And I think that the biggest issue here with Tesla is actually the discussion of robots. Uh, maybe they need to stop doing this. Maybe they need to just talk about we're ramping this, we're building this, we're doing this. The market likes laser focus in the growth area. And when you talk about this, it freaks people out. And I think that's the big issue here. It's a fight between the bulls and the bears off that. Do the robots, but they're going to be a little while away. And I think the market hates that type of stuff. It's what we see quite a lot. Be careful on Tesla. It's going to be some wild sessions. Look for a break to the low or break to the high off that base that's been formed off the last two days. And you should be seeing some nice big impulse moves. XLF, just a bit of a sector we thought we'd bring up here. Usually during crashes, like proper crashes, financials lead the way or at least show you weakness in the economy, weakness in the economic system, everything. 
XLF, because of the raising of or the rising rates and the rising discussion about that, isn't doing so poorly. So around that 39 level, we've seen some decent buying here. And even if it's not a sector for you, it just shows you time and time again that there's some good technicals through sectors. And we continue to look at these on the chart. So just an interesting pinpointed zone there should we come down to it. So we discussed the idea that is the economic health overall good? And the small caps say no. This is Wyckoff distribution. We get that max pain. We obviously come back down and we break lower. Now, we know that this 210 is where we get more convinced if it breaches through that we're in a longer term, nice multi-month break towards the high. Underneath this level, we're in incredible volatility and you've got to be fast, nimble and quick because the VIX is above 20 as well, that volatility index. So we've got this weird kind of movement here in IWM. This is showing us that the overall smaller caps are not performing that well in earnings and it's something that we should be concerned about. Tough to trade, good to look at at this stage. The trades are really in the NASDAQ and S&P 500 though instead. NASDAQ was incredibly bearish on the session. Here's our hanging man candle. <laughs> Here's the result of the hanging man candle, an incredible movement down. Now we have a gap between 15,000 and what is that about 14.8, 14.9. So that level might be looking to be filled at some point in the future. I'm sure it will eventually get filled. But what was interesting is before the earnings announcement from Amazon, we were sitting straight on support and we ran a live stream. We were talking about this. If you're interested in live streams, remember to subscribe as well. We do do the, the close Monday to Thursday every week and 14.5 was hit. So basically previous resistance becomes support. We didn't get the turnaround. The markets like to close on a support, then the futures do its own thing and then they come back and retest levels. But that Amazon result pins and snap pushed it. And at this stage, it's trading around 14,000 767 so a lot of movement here after hours a significant pull up in the markets if it breaches underneath this zone in the future be warned it's probably going back to 14,000 that's the most likely next level for it if it continues to come down and holds it and double bottoms off this wow that would be a phenomenal trade certainly towards the bullish side of the action but it's going to be very tough because we have a jobs number coming out and the NASDAQ shows us that it hit support, but where the bigger interest is here is the SPY. And we have a pattern that you don't often see. Well, maybe you do see it a little bit. So we've got things like the evening star at this point in the markets. And for anyone who doesn't know, these types of patterns we've used before, here's a fantastic one. Usually what you do is on this one, which is a morning star, we get the gap then it closes, then it breaks down, then we usually get some kind of candle or rejection candle, then it gaps up and closes. Very significant trading day happens after that. Usually it goes in that direction. Now in this case, look at this, we got one, two, three massive great trade candles. We were there, we were talking about it at the time. Well, guess what? If it wasn't for Amazon pins and snap and obviously earnings and fundamentals do end up moving markets, I think the market was getting ready to go short. And this is where we have this conundrum. Is the market still going to do whatever it feels like anyway? This is a gap up, some indecision, a gap down, and some follow through action. So basically confirming that we wanted to go shorter. And remember 440 is the interesting zone here for support. And what I think happened is it's not just the earnings, but also a huge amount of puts that are sitting right around here. So maybe the market will try to fill these gaps, and this is just a guess because we can't be sure here, fill these gaps, hover in the zone, and then move through. I think traders are gonna to need to be nimble on the charts post non-farm payrolls and post next week. Because if we hold, let's say the market ends up kind of doing this and sits around here, coming into the close, it could be a very brutal volatility session next week, especially towards the negative side. If I was looking at that chart and I didn't know anything else about what's happened after hours, you would see that and you would think, as soon as we make a new low, I'm going short from the perspective of technical analysis. Obviously, you need to make your own decisions. It's just based on that technical setup similar to over here. When you get the follow through on it, it tends to lead to bigger drops. So it's certainly one that we'll be watching. And I think it's, it's tough because of the earnings and of the jobs numbers, it's going to be highly volatile through the news. Technical analysis, you know, you get underneath here, 
weakness ensues and that's what i guess we're looking at here but what do you think in the comments down below do you think the market's setting up for bearish action or do you think it's bullish look at the weekly close as well another one we'll be looking at we suspected that this green highlighted zone would reject 20 moving average is too much for it at this point and on top of that we had so many calls sitting on the 460 but most of this comes down to now the jobs numbers and the session on Friday, such an important session, a huge point of news. Let's move over just quickly discussing the crypto markets here. Bitcoin, really nothing has changed here. Bitcoin and the crypto markets seem to be just holding on. Please let them go up. That's what they kind of elder bulls are saying and the bears are just sitting there going, yes, I'm loving my flag. Let's, let's completely destroy the crypto bros. We're gonna send them back down all the way to 10K town. But it hasn't happened at this stage. We do have the downward trend line and we have the 20 moving average, the red line here. These two lines, or these two areas, clearly dictate the bulls and the bears fighting it out. We see the long leg doji candle here, the high, the low, and the indecision. So the open, the close, the high, the low, showing indecision right at that zone. It then rejects, it then finds some buying pressure in this little highlighted area. And until it breaks past this, we can't be confirming that bulls are in control. And really the bears, yeah, I get the flag territory case, but at this point, I don't think there's a trigger either way. It's completely indecisive. I don't like it when it's like that. It's, it's one of those markets where you've got to look at it and say, hmm, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do. Guess what? As a trader and investor, the beautiful thing is you have the decision to make a more informed choice when you have the opportunity to see something that you like. Isn't that beautiful thing about trading investing? We have the opportunity to make the decision when we see what we want to see, what we believe has the stat advantage in it. So going over to Ethereum, it looks a little bit better than the Bitcoin market. We've got the bullish hammer. We have, of course, the slight bullish rejection here, but we don't necessarily have the follow through. So I think most Ethereum traders are looking for a new peak to be formed on the previous session. And then for them, at that point to then say, okay, cool, let's let's try buying this throughout that point. Something that a lot of people will be looking at. Bitcoin shorts did rise, not really substantially, but it did rise over the last 24 hours. We look at this just to kind of gauge what the big whale positions are doing. Are they shorting? Are they buying? It's been a good kind of catalyst towards realizing the markets are weaker. And when we move over to the biggest news, well, it all comes down to the non-farm payrolls. And this is an impossible number to exactly know what the market's going to interpret it as. Reasons are this, bad news could be good news because think about it, if we have bad employment change numbers, all of a sudden, oh, maybe we don't need to raise rates as fast as expected. Hey, that could be a positive to the markets, maybe it is. And on the converse side, maybe we have amazing numbers. And then that's bad for the market as well because, oh, wait a second, we've got to raise rates faster than we expected. The economy's so good. So here's the, here's the issue. Both ways, we don't know at this stage. And that's why we're going to have to be reactive to the news and not necessarily predictive on it. The markets are telling us weakness, weakness, weakness. The, bond, the options are telling us in the middle. The interest rates are telling us that the markets are actually potentially going to go down as well based on the fact that they're increasing. So it's really just a fight between the earnings results, which eventually will lack last in the next couple of weeks and the jobs numbers. Stay tuned for more. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to subscribe, smash that like button and let us know where you think the market's going over the next 24 hours. See ya everybody, bye for now.